recently Manjar just released a new version of its uh, OS. That new version would be uh, 21.3 be raw. Now this is not a uh, Arch-based distro I recommend, but in case you do want it, I will show you how to install it. I don't recommend it, and I'll get to the, the reason why I recommend it at the end of the video. Well, let's go into the versions of Manjaro they have. So you have the Plasma, XFC, and GNOME editions, which I'm we're going to be looking at the GNOME version, but these are the other two that they support. And you have the you can use a minimal or full version. We're going with the full version because I recommend if you are going to uh, have someone use this or use it yourself, you use the full. Unless you know what you're doing, then you can do minimal. But if you're going to install it for someone else, which I highly recommend you don't for a number of different reasons, you should set it to minimal. Or you, should, you should use full for them, not minimal because they don't need that unless they know what they're doing. Now you have the ARM versions, which have much more variants, which I think because they focus more on the ARMs, the ARM versions, which you can choose your ARM version. And then you have your community editions, which are not maintained by the Manjaro team, but maintained by the community, and they're, I mean, they're fine. I remember once using one, it kind of didn't work very well, but you could go with the community. So that was, that was a quick look at, at the Manjaro versions, and now we're going to do an install. But I have a virtual machine ready to go. Probably speed through it because it's your stereotypical Cal Arch Calamari's install. You can do it. So I'll get on to it after I begin the inst installation. It shouldn't take that long. Oh, we have to put it into the GNOME version, and let's get on to the internet. let's install it. So we're go on. We're American English. Let's go and I'll recommend swap the file. your password in let's go install now as you see the installer is very straightforward and bare bones there's not much to talk about so did it finish Or did it crash? Yeah, 21.3 rule. I guess it installed. So that was incredibly fast. Let's restart. Hopefully it installed. Uh, oh, it did not install. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so, let's see. Maybe we could talk about why not to use Manjaro and Manjaro's had a lot of problems in the past like one is since they use since they hold back packages for a week 
in the name of stability, it doesn't really create stability. Let's try the installer first again. So, so back to Manjaro. So one of the problems with Manjaro is that they hold back system packages from the Arch repos for their distro, which they do in the name of stability, but there's a problem with that, which is they just hold back every update and not like some updates or regressions like I've heard brought to find the source on that, where they actually released a package that was not released in the Arch repo. Then, then they also I believe they held back critical security updates, which is not what you're supposed to do because you should push those whenever you get them. Even Microsoft seems to do that, although with that latest uh, security using Microsoft Office, they seem to not push back. They seem to just push back the patch Tuesday, so. Who knows? Then another problem is multiple times they failed to renew their SSL certificates and they told users to fix it by setting their clocks back a day, which is not a fix. I mean, it's like akin to that Microsoft uh, exchange vulnerability where they just continued counting up December because they overflowed their signed date format that is idiotic. Then another one is their POMEC utility. I'll restart once I get through this part. Their POMEC utility uh, it has DDoS the AUR several times. So they shipped the update that DDoSed uh, the AUR, which they do, they actually do prevent you from using the AUR, and you can actually blame Linux YouTubers for the problem because Mandaro don't recommend you use the AUR and even kind of tuck it away and hide it because they know it's probably going to break. And you have the Linux user was like, oh, here's how you enable the AUR, and if you're a beginning Linux user, you're just going to follow along with these guides. The next thing you know, you're doing something that's breaking your system. And that, that's, that's, that one's not on Minjar, that's on the users and uh, YouTubers and whatnot. Is They don't want to do that. Is they, Minjar doesn't market itself as Arch. Base, they're just a distro that happens to use Arch as a base. And this one is another problem is apparently the finances are sketchy with donating where someone got a laptop when they probably shouldn't have from donation funds. It's all concerning, but there's fishier companies out there than Menjaro to worry about. Like if like, I mean, it's all bad that someone should be able to get a $2,000 laptop from donation finances, but you are having uh, people at the college board making tons of money off of AP tests and, uh, and the SAT. So really, it goes everywhere with these types of companies. They may not be for profit, but ultimately they are for profit, so uh, pick your poison. If a few times people misuse finances and get themselves a laptop, I guess I might be fine with that, as long as it's not crazy. Although the main issue is because the treasurer was kicked out. Yeah, that's those are some reasons why not to use Manjaro, is if any of them... Those are reasons why you shouldn't probably use Manjaro, but I'm going to take a look at uh, Gnome Edition.
Roll GDM. <laughs> Minix. Yeah, let's. Screen mode, switch. There we go. Now, Manjaro Gnome. Your simple gnome based distro. I believe they use X11. But I do kind of like Manjaro's welcome screen, which is one of those things where I'm like, they do a lot of things wrong, but they also do a lot of things right, which is they have a really nice user-friendly onboarding app. It's like immediately like in Ubuntu Mate, they have a layout switcher, which you can do with how they theme Manjaro, or how they theme GNOME. You have your traditional, which is... Okay, that was weird. Your traditional, which is more like your Windows look, which it looks like Windows. Although it makes you think of Chrome OS for some reason. Then you have tiling, where, well, tiling window, it's like a tiling window manager for GNOME. So if you like tiling window managers and GNOME, you can go ahead and test the waters. You can do how GNOME configures things by default, which personally I like if I use GNOME. It's not letting me do the overview, but sure, well, I'll set it back to Manjaro look settings that's cool, you can enable a Wayland session enable desktop icons different accounts that's cool now of course you have your launch to start and whatever you have easy access documentation and applications. You can install various applications that you might want. Which you select one, so you want HexChat because you use IRC like it's, well, it seems to be every year. IRC doesn't seem to die. So long live IRC. Your death will probably be quite legendary if you actually die. If it actually dies, then. You can install different browsers, so you can get these like those, hit update system, give it your password, authenticate, it'll synchronize first. Um, well, you can, I believe that what kernel it is 5.15, I don't remember what the most recent one is, but yeah, you can see that. Um, looks like they're using ZSH as the default. I believe it's ZSH. Yep, it's ZSH. So, here you can install your text editors. The system's updated, but there's that. Now, let's see. Now, since this is GNOME, you could follow my Fedora video, which I'll probably put in the comment a link to it of what extensions I recommend. I imagine that all the extensions I recommend are already pre-installed. And that's not working. Why isn't it working? Extensions. There we go, you can look at what ex extensions they have. They have pretty much a lot of them, what I recommended, as well as new ones that, or other ones rather, that are there, the, the other layouts, pretty straightforward. And it is pretty much GNOME 40 whatever version. So, let's see, I could open up the settings. They're about... Yeah, no, 42.2. If X. And... Pretty straightforward. Is, if you don't, is, I would say, stop recommending this distro to newcomers to Linux. 
is what I would is my recommendation. It's a perfectly fine arch based system, but if you really want to use arch, you should use something like you either one learn how to install arch, which there's so many different ways to install arch nowadays that it's not that hard. And if you can't do that, then something like Archcraft or Arco Linux, uh, the other one was, is, I think it's Archcraft is the other one I'm thinking of, is they're all pretty easy to install. So just use that. And also don't install anything Arch based on people's computers. Just install like Mint. Or if you really want, if they really need up to date packages, they should use something like OpenSUSE. Or, like, you should install those. I mean, OpenSUSE is also green, so if you like the color green, they should go with OpenSUSE rather than Manjaro. And they're, although I admit it's really a nice green color. Because those are what I recommend. So, that was it for this video. Stop recommending Manjaro to newcomers, please. Don't use Manjaro. Be careful of, who, of donating to them. Be aware of other things and stay safe out there. You never know what type of hacks exist. And have a nice day. Like, comment, subscribe. Goodbye.